Hello and welcome to the Aperol Spritz Paint Along. <laughs> um, my name is Allie and um, I'm a painting instructor. I, I uh, paint and teach live painting workshops and I also teach online courses. And every Monday at 5 Eastern, you get me here for a free uh, live demo paint along. And right now we are in a cocktail series. So um, we are doing the Aperol Spritz cocktail, um, which is one of my favorites. Um, very popular in Venice, Italy, if anyone has been there. Um, I'd love to know if you guys uh, also enjoy these, so feel free to post that in the comments. Um, and a little bit more about this uh, demo paint along. So I do these live, like I said, every week at 5 Eastern on Mondays. Um, they're free to watch. and. I also put together a download of the outlines that you can trace and get your panel um, ready so that you can paint with me. So many of you already have your outlines. Those are available on my website, alliekstudio.com. Um, you can find those under paint alongs. Um, so the outlines download is $10. This week it also includes the recipe for the Aperol Spritz. <laughs> um, and you can find that, like I said, on my site. Um, but many of you guys just watch and enjoy and that's totally fine too. So, um, yeah, I'm going to enjoy my Aperol spritz while I teach you all paint. <laughs> I'm going to set it down for a minute here. Um, and before we jump in, um, I just want to just tell you a little bit about something very exciting happening this week. I am launching my brand new portrait painting class called Features and Faces. And you can see the samples behind me. I'm teaching three big samples in this class and they're all different, obviously you can see here. Um, and I'm so excited. I have not launched a like official brand new full online painting class in like a year and a half. And so this has been a long time coming and I am thrilled that this Thursday, June 17th, you will have access to that course. So mark your calendars. Um, and yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. All right. So without further ado, let's jump in and start the paint along demo. So we've got the outlines. This is the image that we are working on. I'm going to try to get the uh, image in here so everybody can see it. Make sure that it's all on camera. I know you like to see my palette too, so you can see the colors as I go. And that looks pretty good. Um, also, as you guys are joining, please say hello. Let us know where you're painting from, if you're painting with me, if you're also enjoying an Aperol spritz. Um, I would love to hear about that. I'm going to uh, try to follow along here on my other screen so that I can see your comments. Um, always makes it a little bit easier. Let me pull it up and then we're gonna get going. There we go. <laughs> okay, now I can see you guys. All right, so like I said, we've got the outlines on here. I painted over these um, using a purple made from alizarin crimson, Payne's gray and white. Use my little skinny script liner brush to paint over these outlines beforehand. Um, and also I should always mention we're using golden fluid acrylics for this. So if you get the download, it includes the list of the paint colors that I recommend um, having on hand for this demo. So you can use the same colors as me. Um, but if you don't have golden, I always say work with what you've got until you are ready to invest in some golden, which is the best. Um, all right. So. We are going to start off, I think I'm gonna grab a bigger brush, yeah. I'm gonna use my number, what is this, number, number five brush. Um, all right. And I'm going to start washing in the shadows. So this is how I always start my demos. I make a purple with alizarin crimson and Payne's gray. I water it down really good, and I just start building up the shadows. So this is just alizarin crimson and Payne's gray. Oops, I have some white in that puddle. I need to start a new one. I'm gonna move over here. 
I think I had white in there because I was um, doing my outlines with that puddle. So we don't want white in there. That's gonna make it um, opaque. We don't want it to be opaque. All right, going back and hi, Elena. I see you are painting and you shared the demo. Thank you as always. Okay, so we're going to just start comparing light and dark. So I see that up here, the background is darker than the subject. So I'm just starting to wash in the background so that the subject of the orange slice here is going to stand out. Um, same thing on the other side. I'm just comparing which side of the line is light, which side is dark, and I'm using this underpainting to show that. Um, and not worrying about the color. Those of you that paint with me every week, you know that this step is really just looking at the value, that we don't need to worry about the color. Now, up until about this point, the background is darker, but right here it flips, and then the drink becomes darker and the background becomes lighter, so we need to be aware of that. I'm gonna put in the dark background shape on this side first. It looks like this number five brush that I'm using is about ready to be tossed because I can see that it's starting to split a little bit as I work. Um, so I probably uh, won't use this one next time. I wonder if I have a better one. I give my brushes a workout. I don't think I do. Next time I'll get a fresh one. All right, so over here, the drink becomes darker and the background is lighter. So that's where I'm going to flip it and start washing the drink in darker. But then right here, we've got an ice cube, so we're gonna paint around that. Oop, oop, got a little drip there. Totally fine, everything's okay. <sighs> okay, moving along. is all dark this is just our first pass of this color so the next thing we do will be to come back with a darker version of it but right now we're just kind of generalizing and picking you know basically the lights and darks but we'll push the dark areas that are really dark um, a little bit more in the next step um, okay so the side here of the glass is still darker than the background so I'm gonna keep showing that. Now when we get up to this ring at the top, this is lighter. So I'm gonna only do this dark that's in between that line. And I'm getting a little bit drippy. I need to do a better job offloading my brush, I think. So I like these palettes because you can keep the paint very soupy and then you can kind of scrape the edges of the brush on the palette and then just kind of come back with the tip and catch a little bit. I get these palettes from Hobby Lobby. And they're super cheap, like $5. All right, now here the orange is lighter, the background's darker. Here the orange is darker, the background of the ice is lighter. So again, it flips. Now as we move over here, there's a, it's kind of similar, actually, the value of the orange in the background. So we're just gonna do it the same and we'll separate those with color later. Okay, now the orange is dark going up to the peel. So we're gonna show that. You see how I'm just working my way around the whole panel. I'm not getting hung up in one little area trying to put the details in perfectly. I'm kind of working the whole piece. Even though it's a little piece, um, it's still important to kind of jump around it um, and not get hung up in one place. At least that is um, what's important for me. <laughs> and hopefully that is helpful for you too. That's what I find helpful. I'm going to take another sip of my Aperol before I forget about it. <laughs> All 
All right, we'll see if this helps me paint even looser. Maybe it'll help you guys. <laughs> All right, kind of catching this water line. And you see how the water line kind of like bends its way around the ice cubes? It's just kind of interesting. Like the water line um, is not going to be a perfect arc. It kind of wraps around those ice cubes. I think that's kind of cool. Okay, now let's see. This is a little bit dark here. We'll wash some of that in. All right, so now, oh, I need to bring my background over a little bit more. Then we'll move on to the next pass. Okay, now we're gonna do the next pass of this color, which is going to push um, a little bit darker. So I'm going to um, switch to a brush that's not splitting on me. I'm gonna go down to my number three. Um, and I'm going to just kind of find the areas that are a little bit darker. So I'm gonna still use Alizarin Crimson and Payne's Gray, watered down, but now it'll have a little bit less water. Um, so it'll show up a little bit more. We're not gonna go super dark anywhere in this image though, because if you look at our reference, it's all pretty light. Um, so we aren't gonna go as dark as what we do in some of the other demos, like some of our florals that we've done recently, we would have some really dark areas kind of in between the flowers and shadow. But with this one, we don't, the darkest area is probably under the glass right here. So I guess we'll catch that. but there's not gonna be all that many places where it's very dark. Um, I guess under these ice cubes is also one of the darker areas. So I'm not putting this darker color everywhere. I'm just looking for those darkest areas and this is what we call the roadmap for the rest of the painting. So as we build up the colors of the painting, it will be easy to see how they compare, how light or dark to make them because we already have this framework um, set down for us. So that is the reason for doing an underpainting like this. All right, we'll go a little bit darker here. Yeah, all in all, we're not gonna build it up super dark. Just push a few places. We really want this orange slice to stand out. That's so much fun. And maybe we'll build it up a little bit more right here. Let's see, where else do we want to put it anywhere else? Maybe we'll build it up a little bit right there. And just a little bit more dark on the orange here to kind of separate that. I guess that is kind of dark. Okay, I think we've got enough of this. So now, um, now we wanna do a wash of the complementary color underpainting. Um, but we want all of this to be totally dry before we do that because otherwise it will pull that underpainting off. So if you have any areas that are like still really wet, I just say go back and kind of touch them with a rag or blot them with your finger um, to kind of help with that drying process. Uh, if I was doing this on my own and didn't have everybody watching and waiting, I'd probably just step away for a few minutes and let it dry um, because acrylic paint does dry really fast. Um, so it does not take long. So for this wash, we're going to do complementary colors. And I don't always do, in complementary, it means opposite on the color wheel. 
Um, but I don't always do the true opposite. Uh, I kind of generalize it a little bit, but basically if I'm going to paint in an area warm, like the orange is going to be very warm, I'll lay down a cool color underneath. And if I'm going to paint something cool, like the background is pretty much all cool, like we've got blue towards the bottom and kind of more green muted tones at the top, then I'm going to lay down a warm color underneath. So that's kind of our, our basic plan here. So um, let's start talking about what colors we want to do. Um, I think, I think I've, for the background, I think I'm gonna do magenta. Um, magenta could work as warm or cool. This is quinacridone magenta. But we are going to call it warm for this demo. Um, but you know, it's a cooler red than like a pyrrole red, which is more orangey. Um, so we're gonna call this, we're gonna call this warm for this demo. All right, so I am going to just water it down and loosely put this in the background. And I'm not worrying about if I get a little bit on the glass or on the orange slice. I'm actually kind of doing that on purpose because I want this color to kind of bounce around and not be a perfect hard edge around the forms. Um, because if this wash is done loosely, then the rest of the painting, it'll be easier to keep it loose there. Now on this right side where it's a little bit darker, I'm gonna put my magenta down a little bit darker. Over here on the left where I know it's going to be bright, I put the magenta down a little bit lighter. So I think about that when I do my background washes. All right, now, and I'm using my bigger brush, I switched to my number nine. Um, and now we're going to look at um, what we're gonna do for the next area. I'm just pulling this up. I want to see your comments. Um, now we're going to look and you guys get to hear me again. Okay, there we go. All right, let's see. Robin says, ready for one of those Aperol drinks. They are delicious. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like an orangey, fruity, refreshing drink. They're awesome. <laughs> okay, so for the glass, Actually, I'm gonna continue this magenta into the glass because this glass color is pretty close to the background color because it's the background that's shining through. So let's actually just continue this. Let's pull it up to where the ice is and then we're gonna get a different color in there. All right, so what are we gonna do for the orange in the glass and the orange itself? Um, I think we're going to do blue for those. I think that'll be good. Yeah, so we're going to do phthalo blue green shade is what I am using. And just so you guys know, I do not plan these demos very much beforehand, so I am making these decisions like off the top of my head. Um, paint alongs are different from my online courses where I spend like months designing them. <laughs> the paint alongs kind of just happen off the cuff, but that's also fun. All right, so we're going to put this in with phthalo blue green shade. And it's super watered down. And we're just going over all of the shadows that we put down. You see how it's kind of dripping. I'm not worried about it. I'm just catching it. It's kind of fun where this blue um, even overlaps some of the purple. Kind of like how those underpaintings play together. All right, so that is the underpainting. Um, and now, once this is dry, which will hopefully be in a few seconds, we will start putting in the actual painting colors. Um, gives me time to have a drink of my Aperol, <laughs> Aperol Spritz. I still don't know what we're gonna do next week. 
Let me type into the comments what you guys want for next week. A couple of ideas I have are a whiskey drink, thinking like Tennessee whiskey. Um, also, we have Chattanooga whiskey here in town, so I might do a drink with something of theirs. Also thinking about just like a cold beer in a glass would be really good too. I'm a Wisconsin girl at heart. All right. Yeah, type in what you guys want. Um, and I will definitely take that into consideration. And if you have any great photos, feel free to put those into the comments here because I am always searching for good reference material to use. All right, so let's talk about what colors we're gonna do for the orange. Um, I'm gonna use some Hansa Yellow Opaque, some Pyrrole Red Light. I'm going to need some Titanium White. And now that our underpainting is on there, now I'm not going to thin with water anymore. I'm gonna thin with glazing medium. So I'm using Liquitex um, glazing medium. You can use any brand. I use Liquitex because it's cheaper and I think it works just fine. So that's what I'm doing. All right, so we're going to make um, kind of a yellowy orange color with the Hansa Yellow Opaque, Pyrrole Red Light, and some white. And the white will make it even more opaque because otherwise yellow and red are not very opaque. Um, so the white, it also kind of dulls it down a little bit when you add white to a color. It makes it a little bit more chalky, more pastel-like. Um, and I'll put a little bit of glaze in there, just a little bit. Okay, I think I need a little more yellow. All right, so I'm going to start pulling out some of the highlights in the orange. So we're going to, uh, it's going to look more green because we're laying it on top of blue. So if that happens, uh, it could be one of two things. Your blue could still be wet, like I just noticed mine was, or it could just be because the paint is transparent, the blue is kind of showing through. If your blue is still wet, you wanna dry it because otherwise you're gonna get a muddy mess. Um, I just happened to put mine into a little bit of a puddle, but I'm gonna keep going. Um, so I'm not scrubbing this in, and I'm also leaving those little windows of that blue showing through. And we're going to come back with more passes. So if this is looking kind of dull, don't worry about it. We're going to get brighter as we, as we go. Um, let's see. So I'm leaving this little band of dark because it's a little bit darker there. I'll come back and probably do a darker tone there. Um, kind of looking for maybe the brightest 50% or so of that orange. I'm gonna add a little bit more red in there. Maybe a little more yellow. I think maybe I just had too much white. I don't know. It was probably fine. I just needed more paint. Okay. When I need to remix a color because I run out of it, I don't worry about if, um, if it's exactly the same match because I actually don't want it to be the same. It's more interesting if it's not. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna go a little bit darker. So like this area of the orange is darker. So I'm gonna add more red to it to push that a little bit darker. So it's still Hansa Yellow Opaque, Titanium White, and Pyrrole Red Light, but I just added a little bit more red. So you can see this is a little bit darker than what I had down. But it's kind of fun seeing those little bits of blue popping around in there. And we're gonna put this in the other areas where it's dark. So 
Sorry for the slamming doors in the background. That would be my children. <laughs> all right. So this is all pretty wet now. So I'm going to let this dry before I come back and try to pull out brighter highlights. But while I've got this orange color on my brush, I can see this kind of bouncing around in this area around the ice cubes. So I'm going to drop that in in a few places that I see it here. Kind of see it at the water line. Maybe that ice cube has a little bit. There are some real fun reflections on these ice cubes. I think these are going to be pretty fun to um, paint. Let's see, don't really see it there. Over here we see some. All right, dash over there. Down at the bottom, yeah, I guess we do kind of see the same color. It's maybe a bit more pink. There's, I'm gonna do this little dash on the right side with this orange, and then I'm going to, I think, add a little more pyrrole red. Yeah, we're gonna do more pyrrole red and a bit more white to make it more of a pink tone down here. And actually, this is pyrrole red light, I should say because pyrrole red is a different color, which is close. If that's what you have, it's fine, but I actually like pyrrole red light better. I've accidentally bought pyrrole red before. It's just a little bit more of like a true red, less of an orangey red. Um, and I find that I have more use for the orangey red. But that's just me. Okay. Maybe we'll drop a little bit on the edge of the glass here. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Get a little bit in there. Okay, now let's see what we wanna do next. Let's put this deep uh, red in here under the ice cubes while I take one more sip of my Aperol. Okay, so this deep red we are going to make um, with pyrrol red light. And to make it more of a darker true red, we're gonna add a little bit of quinacridone magenta to it. That will make it more of like a berry fire truck kind of red red. And I think I'm gonna start just putting those two colors in. Yeah. And that is pretty dark but I think that's what we want. Okay. We're gonna fill this dark area in pretty well. So that gives some nice contrast, making the other orangey areas um, stand out. Got a little bit of it right there. Now over here, it gets lighter. You see how that's lighter? So now I'm going to add a little bit of white to it. So now I've got pyrrole red light, quinacridone magenta, and white in there. And that I'll put in over here where I can see that it gets lighter. And I can probably use this pinky tone in a few other places too, maybe a little right there, um, a little bit around the ice cubes. I think that's it. Okay. So now let's start, let's put some of the background color in. Um, Cause I think covering up a lot of this magenta that we've got in the background is going to make it start to feel kind of more complete. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna make sure that I am not paused. I just noticed it was paused on my end. I think we're good. Somebody give me a shout out, tell me I'm not paused. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see, Belinda said, I'm definitely gonna need to do this one on a later date. Yes, you are. Deborah wants a pina colada with a cherry and an umbrella. Oh yeah, a martini with an olive. These are all great suggestions, guys. I love it. A Cosmo, yeah. Cool. Keep them coming, guys. I'm taking all of this into account. Okay, 
So for the background color, let's, uh, let's start with this dark down on the bottom. So it's kind of a grayish blue. And we're going to make that with um, Payne's Gray and some white. And to dull it down, we're gonna add a little bit of Pyrrol Red Light. I think I did too much white. Payne's Gray, White, Pyrrol Red Light. That's what we're going to use, but I put too much white in mine. All right, and I'm gonna add a little bit of glazing medium in there. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the darkest part, which is down here, and still going to leave my underpainting showing, so don't cover it all up, guys. Leave some of that magenta showing through, and then remember, right about here is where it flips, and the background gets lighter than the drink, um, and actually, over here, it's getting lighter too. So now we need to add some more white to this. Um, but I think I wanna make it a little bit more blue. So I'm going to add just a bit of phthalo blue green shade in there, and that's gonna jazz it up a bit as it gets lighter. So now I've got Payne's Gray, Pyrrole Red Light, Titanium White, and phthalo blue in this recipe as I'm going a little bit lighter. Put a little glaze in there. Okay, and yeah, you can see this is just a little bit lighter. I think I wanna go even lighter still. Yeah, I do. But we'll keep it a little dark right here by the edge of the glass. Okay, now we're gonna go lighter by adding some more white. I should really have a bigger brush going. I'm gonna go back to that number five that was splitting on me, even though it wasn't doing well. You know what, I'm just gonna use my number nine. Let's just do that. We use a really big brush, it'll be fine. <laughs> Always use the biggest brush you can. Okay, putting a little more white in there. And yeah, that's better anyways. I was having too many little hash marks. Just gotta fill in the area. Okay. So this drink was actually sitting on a chair um, handle. So that's kind of what we're showing here, but then I kind of just blurred it out because I didn't want to see too much of it. So up here is actually like the green in the background. So I'm gonna make um, kind of a neutral green um, you know, it's kind of dulled down. It's not super bright, but I might brighten it up a little bit more. So I'm going to make that green um, from Payne's Gray. Let's see, do I have a dry spot here? Payne's Gray White and some Hansa Yellow Opaque. That looks pretty good to start out with. I'm going to put some glaze in there. So because we used Payne's Gray and not a more vivid blue, that's why the green is turning out a little bit duller. If I had used Thalo Blue, this green would be like crazy strong. Um, okay, so yeah, this is kind of that more neutral green. Got it kind of dark over here. Then it gets bright there. I'm gonna look around and see where else I see kind of this darker neutral green kind of around the orange slice. So you see how when I mix a color, I just kind of look around and see where else can I put this color. Um, now in the cup, it's a bit more blue. So I'm gonna put a little bit more phthalo blue in there. And then maybe I offset that with a little white. So it has less yellow in the recipe now. So let's drop that into the shadows of the cup. Still leaving that little bit of pink showing through. Okay. 
Oop, I trimmed my cup down a little too much. So I talked about this last week, but I want to mention it again because we always have new people. When you're doing things like, um, you know, a glass where it has a perfect round shape, um, I may be loose when I'm doing my background strokes, but when I'm going to do this edge of the glass or like the sides of it, I'm going to be really careful that I don't alter the shape, that I don't make this sphere kind of wonky because that will just kind of, it'll just be a, a giveaway that something's not right. So I get real specific as I'm going around areas like that. Um, okay, so let's, for the rest of it, I wanna brighten it up and make it more of like a bright green. So I'm going to actually clean my brush off. I'm gonna make more of a bright, limey green. Even though I don't really see it that bright in the image, I'm gonna put it in there that bright because I think it's gonna look good with all these oranges. So I'm going to make that bright green with white and I'm gonna use some phthalo green. We haven't used that yet. Tiny speck of phthalo green. Oh, I took too much. Phthalo green, super strong. And some Hansa yellow opaque. Need some more white. A little more yellow, took too much green already. Okay, and then I'm gonna mix it with some glaze. And this color is pretty, pretty strong, pretty bright. We're gonna drop it in, see what happens. I think it's gonna look good, yeah. This color always looks good against magenta. So that's part of why I did it. Okay, so don't cover up all the magenta as you drop this color in. Be careful, it's easy to do. Okay. I think just that much for right now. I'll probably bounce this color around in the glass a little bit to have it make sense. Um, maybe I'll do a little dash on the edge. This is like inside the cup. Because we want to reflect the colors inside the cup that are going on outside the cup, right? Maybe I'll do a little bit at the rim. Like I said, be real careful. You might want to use a smaller brush so you don't ruin it like I am. <laughs> okay, all right, we're moving along. We're getting some color in there. Another break time for a sip of your Aperol spritz. Okay, so we haven't done the ice yet. I think we should probably um, address that. So the ice below the waterline is pretty much all lighter than the ice at the top. And the ice below the waterline is actually more of like a peach tone because it's got the color from the um, drink reflecting on it. So we're gonna make that um, with, let's see, we're gonna do white and some pyrrole red light. Um, and I guess it's got a little bit of a purple hue to it, but that might just happen on its own because we're layering this on top of the blue. So I'm just gonna do white and pyrrole red light and I'm going to thin it with some glaze to let more of that blue show through. So I'm gonna actually gonna have very little on my brush. I'm just gonna come back with the tip of it. And I'm going to start putting some of that tone on these ice cubes. A little too much there. I need to offload my brush. I gotta just wipe down my rag. Okay. Got a little clump in there. I grab that. So this um, having this blue underpainting is kind of doing what I thought it would, where it's actually dulling this pink tone down a little bit because it's going on top of the blue. So I'm putting this first layer down pretty transparent, but then I'll come back and brighten it up and it will um, start to look a little more ice-like. And this cube is pretty dark. We'll just drop a little bit of it on there. I'm, I forgot I was still using my number nine brush. <laughs> it's a little tricky to get in there. You probably wanna switch down. It's okay. 
All right. Now let's talk about how the top is going to be a little bit more white. It's actually a little bit more purple. So I think maybe, because I don't want to come in with just straight white yet. I'm going to come in with um, some white that's going to be tinted just a little bit with um, permanent violet dark. So we haven't used that yet. I'm going to just put a little drop of it on my palette here. Okay, so white, permanent violet, dark. So because we're tinting with the permanent violet dark instead of the pyrrole red light, the ice at the top is going to look cooler than the ice under the waterline, which is having that red reflecting on it. And I'm gonna thin it a little bit with some glaze. Okay. And as you're kind of continuing your cubes from one side of the waterline to the other, remember that things don't line up when they go past the waterline because the distortion. Um, so you shouldn't ever have lines that, you know, match up perfectly. And sometimes like the image might show it that way. And when that happens, then I will just kind of take it on my own to, to, offset it so that the line doesn't match up. So, you know, sometimes you just kind of have to take it into your own hands um, to be able to tell the story that you're going for. All right. So now that we have, oh, you know what? I'm gonna use some of this pink purple color to do the highlights on the glass, but I'm going to switch down to a smaller brush so I can get in there a little bit more accurately. I'm actually going to go down to a pretty little one so that I can put that edge in nice and neat. So I'm going to use this permanent violet dark and white mixture. And I'm going to put my head in front of the camera so that I can get in and then I'll show you after, but I need to be able to get pretty close. And this isn't gonna be a perfect line. It's gonna kind of dissolve in and out. It's gonna go in a little bit in front of the orange and then it kind of dissolves out again there. Um, and we'll put this in for some of these little reflections here. Kind of coming down the glass. And we'll make these reflections a little bit more dramatic, but I'm just kind of gradually building it up a little bit. Kind of take baby steps towards things like that because you don't want it to be too much right away. Okay, I like that. Okay. So now let's go back to the orange and start pulling those um, bright areas out brighter. So I'm gonna go back to the same recipe that I was using, which was Hansa Yellow Opaque, Pyrrole Red Light and White. And now I'm just going to make it with more of the yellow and more of the white to brighten that up. Make sure that your little mixing wells that you're going into aren't contaminated so like I try to make a point to kind of touch it at the edges so that I can get some fresh color because I've already gone into my red a few times when my brush was dirty with some blue so as long as I kind of dip from the other side then I'm okay all right so let's see where we can make this brighter this is just a little bit brighter I think I need to go even brighter we're gonna get more yellow in there and more white And we'll see how that does. It's getting there. So I kind of start with those 
mid-tones and then I can build on top of them to kind of brighten them up. Because as it gets more opaque, that allows me to get a brighter color. Kind of bright at the edge here. Dash in there. Kind of reflection where the orange slice is being reflected where the cup kind of cuts into it. Okay, and up at the top is actually more of like a white highlight than a really a yellow one. Um, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get myself some fresh white and I'm going to tint it just a tiny bit and I'm actually gonna tint it with a little bit of pyrrole red because it's actually kind of a whitish pink. Um, so I'm gonna make like a pink to put that highlight in at the top. And I wanna put that one in because I think that's really gonna like separate the um, orange nicely from the background. Just drop that in. Oh, I think I need to go brighter. I need more white. Let's see. So I don't have any glaze uh, on my brush now. I want this to be pretty intense. That looks pretty good. Kind of comes down along the edge of the peel. And actually, while I have this bright tone, let's see where else I can put this on the ice. So we were tinting the ice below the surface uh, with the same pyrrole red. So I want to pull out some of those brighter highlights on that ice that's under the surface with this pyrrole red and white recipe. Okay, that looks pretty good. And you know what? I can use this for this tiny little highlight under the glass. So I'm gonna get in real careful and just drop that in just a tiny little bit there. You kinda of have to get up close because if you don't get that lined up perfectly, it's gonna look kinda of wonky. We don't want wonky. Okay, let's go back to the orange and I wanna pull again some of the more intense orange tones. So like in this area of shadow where we mixed it up with a little bit more red, I wanna make it more vivid because it has a lot of that blue showing through there. So I'm going to go back to my same recipe. You need to get a little more red. And I'm gonna make a bright orange with pyrrole red light and Hansi yellow opaque. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of white in there now, just a tiny bit to make it a little opaque. And yeah, that's, you see how that's like a brighter orange now because we're building up the color as we go over that blue underpainting. Just kind of taking steps towards more intense color. And I can probably pop this bright orange in a few places down in the glass too, where we see more of a intense orange. Where it's kind of reflecting on the ice cubes in more of a bright orange tone. Okay. All right, and now let's do um, let's do some of the brighter highlights on the ice that's above the waterline. Um, so I think we'll go back to that same recipe we were using with the permanent violet dark, but it's just gonna have more white now. So it'll be white and a little speck of permanent violet dark, but it's gonna be mostly the white. And I'm looking for the brightest areas here. So I see that underneath this little orange slice right there. 
See how I'm kind of changing the direction of my brush strokes. Looking for those ice cubes. I'm just pulling out the highlights. I'm also kind of squinting to see how it compares to my reference image, see if there's anything I'm missing. We wanna make sure that the brightest brights and the darkest darks are in the correct places and the rest kind of falls into place. So I'm gonna, let's see, pull the rim out a little bit more. Trying to be real careful with how I paint in the rim so it doesn't get weird. Got a little bit weird. It's a little too thick right there. But we can always save it. Okay. So another thing that you can think about is if your edging gets weird, just let it dry and then you can come back with the background color and kind of trim it down and clean it up a little bit. Um, let's see, I'm trying to see your comments. My, uh, my other screen keeps freezing here, so I'm unfortunately not catching all your comments, guys. Let me try to pull it up again. And every time I do that, it, there we go. Thank you guys for sharing. Um, also, I always try to remember to ask that. If you are enjoying this demo, please hit that share button. You can come right back and keep watching it, but it definitely helps me so much. Um, when you guys share it with your friends who might also be interested in just watching a fun painting demo. So please hit that share button. I very much appreciate it. And tell me if you share it so that I can thank you. Just uh, hit, sh hit share it in the comments or I'm, let me know in the comments that you've shared it. Okay, so we're getting close to the end here and I want some bright pink pops down in the glass. I feel like that is missing. So I'm going to go back to Pyrrole Red and White um, and just try to drop those in real intense. I'm not gonna put any glaze in there. I want this to be very um, strong and opaque. And I'm going to drop this in here. Yeah, see how, how much that makes a difference? Yeah, this stands out because it's kind of layered on top of those other colors. And he's just these extra little bits um, with all the other stuff is what makes it all come together and have fun. Um, let's see where else do I wanna do it? And these, these bright um, orangey pink tones, they look more intense because we've got it like next to this dark tone. Um, I also wanna put some pops of bright blue because we did this bright blue underpainting and I think it's gonna look really pretty to put some bright blue in our painting as well because it'll kind of mirror what we did with the underpainting. So um, I really like to do bright blue with, um, it's going to be phthalo blue green shade and titanium white. I have to find a clean spot to make this color. Um, make sure that your titanium white is totally clean. Um, and I'm going to drop this in. I don't know if I wanna add any glaze in there. Yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit of glaze in mine. Um, and I think maybe I'll drop some of this around the underside of the glass because that kind of makes the glass pop out. Yeah, I like that. And maybe around the fruit here by putting these little bits of blue around it, it makes that orange look more intense. But we're not doing like perfect outlines. You see, I'm just kind of dropping it in a few places and moving along. Um, Cause if you do perfect outlines, then it gets a little too like forced. Um, put a little bit in there. 
Now I think I wanna tone it down a bit. I'm gonna add some more white to that bright blue. All right. Now I lightened it just a little bit. And yeah, I like some of that brighter tone in the background. Yeah, this bright blue is fun. Um, I think I'm gonna add even more white to it. You get myself some more white. I go through a lot of white. I buy the 32 ounce bottles of white from Golden because I go through so much and this stuff lasts forever. They used to sell it in a gallon and I used to buy the gallon. It was like $100, but I, I would always go through it. But I don't think they have the gallons anymore. Um, okay, I'm gonna put some of this blue highlight on the rim here. I'm probably gonna clean up the edge of my rim a little bit more after the demo because I think the only way for me to really get it in there is to have my head in front of the camera for a while. <laughs> I don't wanna do that to you guys. All right. Maybe we wanna put a little bit of this blue on the ice. I think, you know, ice is so reflective. I think it would make sense. I like that. And I think I want to push this dark under the glass just a little bit darker. I think that will make the glass glow even more if we push this dark tone underneath a little darker. Um, and maybe I want to actually warm it up a pinch because when I really look close at my reference, I notice that this dark shadow, because it's got the, the bright orange glass, I think that the dark shadow is a little bit warm. So I'm going to make a, a dark with alizarin crimson and Payne's gray and maybe just a little bit of white. It's gonna be mostly alizarin crimson though. Just a speck of the Payne's gray and a speck of white. And I need more alizarin crimson. Yeah, let's try that. Yep, I think it needs to be, yep, dark like that. That's gonna pop. I need a little more alizarin crimson. Alizarin crimson is another color that I go through a lot of. It's just a really great dark tone, very rich. It's actually alizarin crimson hue that I use. I probably should include that. Okay. That looks good. Just needed that extra dark. Maybe I went too far there. All right. And I think I'm gonna do one more pass to brighten up a little bit more of the orange slice, and then we are going to call this one done. I'm gonna make sure I clean my brush off really well to get all those dark colors off. And then I'm going to go back to my same recipe from before, white, Hansi Yellow Opaque, Pyrrole Red Light. And I'm going to add more white to it maybe more of the Hansi Yellow Opaque and just pull those brightest areas out one more time because I see this is pretty bright on the peel here. We didn't have that super bright. Got another little chunk right there. And kind of right where it meets the glass. It's kind of bright there. Anywhere else? Okay, this area I want to be a little bit more of bright orange as well, but I don't want as much white in there. So I'm gonna do Hansi Yellow Opaque, just a speck of Pyrrole Red. It's gonna actually be mostly the Hansi Yellow Opaque. And I'm gonna go in without any white in there at all. 
and pop out that, yeah. See how bright that gets it now? So there's no white in this recipe now. This is just the Hansi Yellow Opaque and Pyrrole Red Light. But that's how we're gonna get that more vivid orange. And a little bit there maybe. Oh, no, I don't really want it that dark there. I take that back. All right. I think we are going to call this one done because I have little people coming in to talk to me while I'm trying to do my painting. So guess what? It's done. <laughs> um, <laughs> Brecken approves. All right. Thank you guys um, for joining me tonight. Um, and one last reminder, you see my extra little hand? That's not my hand. <laughs> Um, one last reminder that um, this week Thursday is the launch for Features and Faces and um, I would love to have you check out that class. I think you're going to love it. It's my best online class yet and I am really proud of it so please check it out. All right you guys have a great night. Don't forget to post your pieces in my group Allie's Paint Friends. Um, I always love to see what you guys paint um, and this has been a really fun series so next week we're going to do another cocktail might be a beer, might be a whiskey drink, one of those, I think. Um, also really love the idea of doing um, like a pina colada or um, a Bloody Mary sounds really good too. So yeah, all right, you guys take care. Have a great night. Um, oh, Jill's asking, is the portraits class for beginners? So Jill, I break this class down so thoroughly that I say it really is for all skill levels because there's so much content, but it's broken down when in a really easy to follow way. So yes, I would say beginners are welcome. All right, bye guys, have a great night.